Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video today, we're going to take a look at how you can use a, an input element in order to redirect people to different pages based upon what they choose in the drop down. So as always, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also go over to cfninjahacks.com and get signed up for all the free training and Facebook groups you can join over there. So where the inspiration from this came from was a gal who's in the Funnel Builder Certification Program showed us all a page the other day and here's this page right here. And how it works is you uh, have a drop down. You can pick um, which one of them you want. And if you pick, I think it's so it's one or two. So if you pick number one or number two, what it'll do is it'll send you to a page and I'll just show you that right now. It will send you to a page where it says, okay, your score is too low, we're not really able to help you, but we can clean up your credit report for you. And if you pick one of the higher ones, then it will take you to a page where you can sign up and schedule a call in order to, I think these guys are real estate agents, yeah. So get your, uh, go buy a house, apparently is what they're looking for. And here's the original code, this was actually built in ClickFunnels. And here is the code that they used. I, um, you know, I, you know, they did a good job here, but it's not how I t chose to do it myself when I rebuilt this. So let me show you how I did it. And I think with mine, it gives you a lot more flexibility. And over the next coming days and weeks, I'm going to be doing a lot of work as far as kind of building like mock survey elements and things like that in 1.0 and in 2.0 and that's what really kind of got me going when I saw this I said okay well I need to build this thing so what we have here is we just have a simple page set up we got a button here that I didn't do anything to I didn't even set any action on it just completely left it alone because we're going to use it to have somebody click on it but they're not necessarily going to do anything I mean it doesn't have an action once somebody clicks on it and then the other thing here is you could set this up so you might want to put in multiple input elements and then as you put in the multiple input elements you could have a button for each one and then the button would say okay well when you click on this button it would hide this input element and this button and then show the next input element and the next button and you do that just simply you come in here to your set your actions and we're going to do a hide show your actions so you're going to say what elements do you want to show and what elements do you want to hide when you do that but we'll go set this back to the website url so you can do that you could also do it you could hide and show sections and rows and other things like that as well as you're going through here so um, what we did then next is I put in the um, opt-in uh, box right here. But let me show you which one we had to use. It was this one right here. The select box is what you want to use. And then come up here and uh, we then say, you know, come when you come in here, be not set. And then we'll just say custom options. Then I gave it the input name of your options. So you can call this whatever you would like. You want to set your values to one, two, three, four, five, six, however many options you have. And then you can call this option whatever you would like. And whatever this is showing here is what will show in the drop down right there. And that's really it. Uh, what you have to do in order to get this to work besides the code itself. But let's go over here to a live page and I'll show you how this works. And so we have chosen option one right here. So we are going to click and it took me to Google, which is where I told it to take me for option one. If we come back here to option number two, it's going to take me to Facebook. And then option number three will take me to Yahoo. And those are the three different options that I have set up in here. So let's just take a look at this simple bit of code because it's really not much at all. And what we have here is we have our opening and closing script tags, of course, like always. And then we use uh, what is known as an array in JavaScript. And so we're just saying here we have a variable and the, and I called that variable option link. And then uh, between the square brackets, I just put in these three URLs where I want it to go. So you could have it go anywhere. You could have it go to another ClickFunnels page. You could have it, I mean, go anywhere you want, Facebook group, anything, anywhere. It doesn't really matter. You can just put them in there. And so it's really flexible. You can just come in here. Oh, I, I changed out the page. I changed out the URL. I changed out the path. Just come in there. Boom. Those top three lines, five lines, six lines, however many options you have, you just... Um, 
change out the address there and you don't have to touch anything else. And then all I'm saying here is when somebody clicks on that button, and actually let me size this down and get that out of the way. So um, when somebody clicks on this button, I gave this button a custom um, a custom data title of custom option button. And so you see that right here, custom option button. So I say, when you click on that, you want to uh, then make everything happen. And in this case here, actually, I'm going to pause for a second. Because what I did here is I gave this a custom uh, data title as well. And we want to use the data title because like I said, you could do this and have multiple different ones on this page, multiple different opt-in forms on this page. So we want to give it a different data title. So I'm going to call this one here, custom options and click on update when you uh, put that in. And when I was testing it, I was just using the selector of the class. Well, that class is going to be the same for every single one of these elements. So we don't want to do that. So in this case here, what we want to do is we want to make this a data title as well. So we got to put it inside of square brackets and then we say data title and then equals and then uh, double quotes and we will paste that in. And then we have, uh, so here is then the selector for this element right here. So what we're going to say is when somebody clicks on that button, what we want to do is we want to find out what is the value of that uh, input element. And so in this case here, we have option three. So option three is showing right now. Well, option three, when we set this up, option three, the value is the number three. So we want to pass that number three into this variable right here called option. And then this next line just says, open this new window, um, but actually keep it in itself. So it wants to open it on itself. It will not go to a new page. It will not open up a new tab. It will just open up in itself like that. And then the only difference here, so with the window open is what opens it. Then we're just saying here, option link of our option minus one because we're using jQuery code right here. And so in this case here, this would actually be, this here is actually um, the jQuery index of zero. This would be an index of one and this would be an index of two. So if I put in one, two, and three, I have to take off one in order to make those numbers match up properly. So then we're just saying uh, grab the first one here. So if we, if we click on the option one, we say grab the first one, option two, grab the second one, etc. And that's it. That's all the code there is to uh, do this whole thing. And so let me save this and then let me reload this and make sure that data title got put in properly. Because if not, I'm going to have to fix that really quickly. And it looks like it didn't. So let me pause. Okay, and the reason why it didn't work is I just put in the data title equals custom options here, whereas on the first one I had it actually down here two levels. I was actually calling this element right down here uh, by the class of L select input. So what I need to do is actually add this L select input after the data title I had up here, and then it should work just fine. So let's come in here, we'll put in a space and a period and paste that in. Now we will save it again and reload the page. And now this time, cross your fingers, it should work. Let's see here, there we go, went to Yahoo. And now we go to number one. And we go here to Google. So, so that's it. You always want to make sure you get your selectors right, as we've talked about in so many other videos, is make sure you have the selector right. That'll mess you up almost as many times as having syntax errors where you forgot a common comma or in any number of other things. So again, as always, um, if you would, please subscribe and then also go to cfninjahacks.com for more great training. Until next time, have a great day.